Welcome again to the Trainer School League. I am your host, V, and uh, my co-host, Wire Dragon, here. Hello, hello. Today, our competitors are Pichu, who is coaching the Peking Chews, and Karate Man of the Backyard Buzz Swoles. Um, any specific Pokemon that you're thinking of noteworthy over here, Mr. Wire Dragon? I mean, I'm get, I'm excited to get into it, right? Uh, two teams we haven't seen yet. Week one, always full of exciting new strategies, exciting new Pokemon. Can't wait to see how these trainers utilize them. Yeah. Um, I do want to touch back to when we were picking out our drafts. Um, there were a lot of big picks that happened. The But for Pichu, um, she was kind of asking me how to you know, pick teams or what to really pick. Um, and so she was asking me like one on one, it's like, hey, would this be good? Would this be good? And as a faculty member, I didn't want to like say anything to really like persuade her one way or another. Um, and it pretty much just ended up that she picked a very well rounded team altogether. Um, we got the the Great Tusk, the Corviknight, Mimikyu, Grimmsnarl, Mudstale, Arcanine, Rotom Frost, Venonat, Venomoth, uh, Pachirisu, Dragonair. Is there? Anything from her list that you can see of noteworthy? I mean, as you said, just an incredible slew of Pokemon. Great Tusk, probably one of the most premier OU Pokemon in this format. It's incredible base stats, has really powerful moves, has an assortment uh, of hazards and hazard removal, um, paired with some other like great Pokemon that got better this generation. Um, stuff like Corviknight uh, mm -hmm. being more prevalent this generation than it was in its last. Grimmsnarl's getting extra moves, stuff like Parting Shot, just classics of the format. Mimikyu Arcanine, just incredibly powerful Pokemon. I'm really excited to see how she's able to utilize those. Yeah. Um, and then with the Karate Man, uh, he is a friend of Matt and Wise. Um, and we definitely saw how his first match went. So hopefully they're on the same level uh, of, of expertise because with that, his team looks pretty scary as well. Um, the Iron Valiant, the uh, Golden Ghost, Salomon, Sorark. The Crocodile, Belly Bolt, Fortress, Dutch Hound, Carcole, and Rapscat. Is there any Pokemon that you see from here? I mean, what here I really want to focus on the high tiers, right? Iron Valley and Golden Go, two incredible Pokemon. It's, it, they can be Pokemon that, if set up correctly, can absolutely take over the game. And another pair that really brings like focus to me is Salamence Crocodile, two Pokemon with the dual ability of Moxie and Intimidate. So he really gets to choose which mode he wants to go on those Pokemon and change a sweeper depending on what game they're playing. Yeah, most definitely. Um, so definitely can't wait to see what's going to happen here. Shall we let the match begin? Yeah, I think we should have a look at the game. Let's see, let's see what they brought. All right, so here we go. Um, that seems like a very scary team from both members. Anything that uh, they can really pick out on, on what their leads may be. Uh, leads? Uh, I mean, it's it's hard to argue with the Grim Snarl coming from the peach, Peking Chews. Light screener to set up. Frank's Ramon can get out of there pretty quickly in case. Um, as for Karate Man, if that Salamence is intimidating, it's pretty. It's a pretty safe lead into what most of the opposing team is going to do. But V, there's a car call here. There sure is. I wonder I how it's gonna. I, I, I'm I'm scared. <laughs> I'm excited to see it. I cannot wait to find out. But as as they're choosing leads here, like I, you gotta wonder what that what the what the little roller's up to. Otherwise, um, Pokemon we didn't talk about, Belly Bolt is one of those, too, that could see play, but we'll check it out. Here we, here we go, an Iron Valiant versus a Great Tusk. Um, with a Moonblast, and the Great Tusk is dead. Well, I mean, frame one, kill one. Moonblast from Iron Valiant showing off its special set to make sure that it's able to kill that Great Tusk in one hit. One of the best Pokemon from the Peach Chews down on that first turn. Incredible play. And uh, apparently I didn't have the screen set up, so viewers did miss that. Uh, I apologize. But just from our excitement, you could definitely tell that the Iron Valiant just straight up did a Moon Blast to a Great Tusk and killed it. Uh, here we got a Rotom Frost uh, against a Carcoal now. With a Blizzard, not very effective. Only doing about 13% of its HP. But I feel like that's pretty fine all, in all earnest. And I think that confirms the EV light here from the car call. So maybe going for a bulkier set. Interesting what offensive moves this thing is going to click. Or maybe setting up something like the rocks here. 
And they definitely are waiting. Oh, switching out. Okay. And yep, he did throw out that Stealth Rocks. And here we have a big old Corviknight. Let's see what's going to happen up with a bulk up. Flamethrower, super effective, but not a whole lot of damage with leftovers. Yeah, the offensive power from the Carcola isn't really much here, though. Is that a Brave Bird? It was a Brave Bird, doing another Flamethrower. It's just, I mean, it's just, it's slow. Oh, with a Roost? Yeah, the biggest part of this is the burn, though. Oh, that is not doing a whole lot of damage with that Brave Bird. And that Flamethrower is just slowly ticking down. Yeah, overall, unless this Carcol demonstrates something, it should be a win for the, the Bird. Okay, now we got the Iron Valiant coming out. Let's see, and it has that special set, so it's it's definitely interesting to see what's going to happen here. I believe this Pokemon gets Thunderbolt, but don't hold me to that. I'm trying to think of what's spe it's special, so it's going to be a decent damage in its Corviknight, but I'm not entirely sure if this thing's whole move well, but I believe there should be an electric type move coming out here. It does get Thunderbolt. And Thunder Punch and Thunder Wave. Oh, and it just switches out. And it's just, nope, I'm not going to deal with it. So the Belly Bolt came out off with the Electric Morphous with its fun little ability, pulls up that charge. And that left floor I mean, is, is really putting in its work. Yeah, those, bir those birds live in forever, but it's also not doing too much with that burn. Oh, switching out to Kachirisu with Volt Absorb. Oh, that's funny. That's a, that's a little uh, funny little guy. <laughs> I mean, the 2016 world champion showing his uh, presence right here. Going to be great into those belly bolts. And if that Valiant is running that electric move, could be good there too. Oh, hoping to get the paralyzed with that nuzzle, but electric types cannot get paralyzed. Which is one of those nuanced things that veteran players get, but not um, that not new players understand all too well. Well, and it might just be clicking it in case of the switch there. Muddy Water Mist. I'm it's, actually, it's, that's a lot of Muddy Water. I don't understand how that would miss. I'm actually not sure. This Belly Bolt, look, is in a really good position against the Peaching 2's team. There's not many great options. Oh, and another Volt Switch. Okay, what are we getting? Okay, now we're getting the Golden Go coming out with the Balloon. Mr. Mac and Cheese. Whole, uh, flying above your head. Light screen set up. And finishes off the uh, the Grimmsnarl. There we go. Thunderbolt from the Kelda, uh, from the Rotom onto the Coracle. It is definitely doing damage. Ooh, Rock Blast, is it finishing off? The Rock Blast does Whoa. finish off. Five hit critical hit. I wonder if he's. He, we know he's EV light. That was that was the highest roll possible. Incredible option. And then we got the Mimikyu with the play rough with a miss. It missed. Man, that is that is not great for Pichu. It's almost it's... devastating. The disguise falling off too really like puts the best part about this Pokemon down. Okay, there we go. I finally finished off the Carcool. I mean, you're in a great position. There's not really many bad switch-ins here. And the Golden Go comes back out again with the Air Balloon. Will-O-Wisp, but it is immune, immune due to the ability. Yeah, good as gold, showing the extra bit of wonderful stuff that cannot be affected by those status moves. Um, perhaps try, maybe he's considering the double again, because Karate has definitely shown willingness to double before. And hoping with the switch out, okay, and the belly bolt comes out with the Corviknight. Two friends saying hello again on the battlefield. Yeah, but that covered us. Thunderbolt not doing a whole lot there. 
Now, does the if if a uh, Pokemon roost, they lose the flying ability or their flying typing, right? Or is it just they just become landed? No, that is correct. They also lose their flying typing for that turn. So those electric type moves are going to be neutral damage against the Corviknight once it goes for roost that turn. That Thunderbolt with a charge definitely did a lot of damage, doing thirty-seven or seventy-three, and finishing off the Corviknight. And now we just have one Pachirisu trying to hold a, its own. Gets hit with a muddy water citrus berry. It, it's trying to survive. Yeah, but at this point, Pot, Pachirisu versus the world is not a matchup that this Pachirisu really wants to be a part of. He he is trying his hardest to to do something to the belly bolt. Interesting too, we've only seen two moves from this Pachirisu in Nuzzle and Thunderbolt. I wonder what the other two moves on this are. Like you if you bring something like a super fake, maybe you start doing damage to this belly bolt. Yep, and it, it, it brought its its last super fang as a last resort. Uh, but the Monty Water finally finished off that Pachirisu, leaving Karate Man Johnson the winner of this match. I believe this is match number four for this week. Yeah, and I mean great showing from the Buzzwolves. I mean, if, if another 5-0 match, we've had some pretty relatively one-side matches, and I mean the the Buzzwolves definitely brought that power like everyone else has, so, you know, I mean, I think the start of the show was Belly Bolt. Pokemon was able to put a lot of pressure, and I mean, after that turn one kill onto the Great Tusk, this Belly Bolt was able to roam free into that team. Yeah, definitely, definitely an amazing matchup between both sides. Um, Peking Chews were just very new to the game and they were able to i would argue hold up their own for it just being their first match um and backyard buzzwolves they they came in swinging and and swinging they did uh finish off the peking shoes with um a score of five to none so definitely want to see more from both teams hopefully they keep uh uh playing for all 11 weeks that we have here um, but yeah, definitely, definitely a great match. Can't wait to see more of them. Absolutely. I, I'm excited to see both these teams in the future. Uh, I believe our last match for week one should be New Berlin Ruination versus the Bone Club. So one more match to go this week. And I, 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 I gotta imagine it's going to be a good one. Yeah, most definitely. Well, thank you for viewing. Uh, if you had a wonderful time, thank you for staying around. Please enjoy more of our videos. Uh, with that, have a great, wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.